Hey everybody, Jilly here from Baby Sleep Made Simple, and we've got another live Q&A all about baby sleep. Once again, who would have thought there was so much to say about baby, toddler, and preschooler sleep, but there is. So I'm here for the next hour answering all of your questions. Sorry about yesterday, guys. We did have a live Q&A schedule, but to be honest, I just didn't feel good. I was really quite just a bit under the weather, I guess you could say. Anyway, so thanks for your flexibility. Um, you can bring any questions you had yesterday and ask me to day. I hope you're all well. I hope your families are okay and healthy and together and safe. Um, that's what's most important. We're doing okay. My husband is full force with the renovations of our garden. <laughs> He's got about so much to do basically. <laughs> He's doing everything at once. My husband's the kind of guy that's like, why do things step by step, exact opposite of me, when you can do everything at once. We're complete opposites in that way. So he's full force and he's watching both the kids right now. So we'll see how that goes, but I plan to be here with you guys the next hour. Um, so the beginning of the week on Monday and Tuesday, if you go to my Instagram page or Facebook page, you'll see that we talked about milestones interrupting your little one's sleep. So Monday's post was, what do I do when my baby rolls in the crib and either gets stuck and can't roll themselves back or gets angry or frustrated. Um, do I go back in and roll them back? How can I handle this? Or my baby rolls into their tummy and I'm just worried, like should I roll them back because maybe their face is planted into the mattress like my daughter did when she was a baby. Um, so you can go, go to Monday's post and get details on that. And then Tuesday's post on social media was what do I do when my baby sits up or stands up in the crib and either won't get back down or can't get back down. So your little one going through physical milestones, it's normal for their sleep to get interrupted, but how much do you intervene? When do you intervene? You can check those posts to get more details. If you've got questions about that, you can ask me now, or if you have just any other questions, feel free to ask me. I'm here for you guys. Um, what's really cool is Instagram once again changed. So I'm adding these videos to my IGTV. So if you ever miss a video or you can't stay for the whole hour, because who has an uninterrupted hour these days, um, then you can always go to my IGTV or on Instagram and watch it there. I don't know if I can put it on YouTube now, but I'll try. I'll let you guys know. All right, let's get started with all your questions. Hey, Carolina. Hey, Tracy and Cole, Courtney. All the usuals are here. Welcome, everybody. Let me know how it's going. Hi, Jin. Happy. Happy Friday. It's not Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> Is it Friday? No, it's not Friday, it's Thursday. Are you teasing me? Ah, don't tease me. I really can't handle that. So my really, really good friend that I grew up with and we went to high school, we lived together in college. She lives in New York now. She sent me a message uh, two or three days ago and she's like, happy birthday, I'm sorry I missed it by a day. And I wrote her back and I was like, no worries, it's a month and a day, but who cares? And she's like, ah, she actually thought it was still March. It's not that she got my birthday wrong. She thought it was still March. <laughs> so it made me feel better about my brain. Uh, yes, Lucy, I'm calling you out. Okay, Court, first question is from Courtney. Sorry, me again. Never apologize, guys. That's what I'm here for. What age do we start having by the clock and by the clock awake times, by the clock nap times and not awake times? This is a really, really good question. I should write, I'm going to write a post on it. So you give me ideas. So I'm going to write this down. This is like awake times and schedules for clients <laughs> or chemical equations. Um, I used to love doing chemistry in high school. Okay, so yes, so awake times versus by the clock naps. We'll talk about that next week on social media. Um, so here's how I approach it and why. When you're first starting to help your little one sleep well, whether it's a baby or a toddler, I always go by awake times. And the reason why is if we have an overtired baby and we're trying to fix their sleep, we really need to prevent them becoming overtired or try to fix that overtiredness. Overtiredness is when babies don't sleep enough during, like don't sleep enough at all in a 24 hour day, or they're kept up for really, really long stretches, like longer than is age appropriate. And the reason why it's such a bad term, overtired, I don't want you to like become anxious about it, but just aware. And the reason why we don't want our little ones to become overtired is because when they're overtired, when they're stretched beyond their means, then they actually have a worse time sleeping. They take ages to fall asleep. They scream or you know cry when they're trying to fall asleep. The usual tactics don't work. They wake up after short periods, so short naps. They wake up more frequently during the night and they wake up earlier in the morning. It sucks, sucks, sucks. So I like to get your baby well rested by helping them nap frequently during the day 
And once they're sleeping great, then we move to a by the clock schedule. So what that would look like is you would start nighttime sleep training. So you'd be doing bedtime and night wakings and you'd only be focusing on nights and you'd be following the recommended awake times during the day to help your baby just stay well rested. Once your baby starts sleeping through the night, so falling asleep independently, sleeping through the night, then you do a little bit of nap training. You get them falling asleep independently for the naps, taking like long and restful naps every day. And that involves tweaking awake times. I have a whole nap training program and in that program we learn that the two major aspects for long and consistent and predictable naps every day are independent sleep so your little one falls asleep on their own without any help from you but that you also get the awake times right and once we figure that out then you go to a by the clock schedule so it's like once you sleep train at night and once you do some nap training or your little one's sleeping great for naps then you can move to a by the clock schedule because some 10 month olds may want to have a nap at nine and one others may do better with naps at 10 and two or 9 30 and 145 like it kind of depends on your little one um, but there does come a point i totally know where you're like okay i'm done watching awake times i really want to follow a clock based schedule so that's when i recommend it courtney is once your little one's sleeping through the night and taking predictable naps every day if you're still helping your little one fall asleep and these naps are not really predictable in length or at time then i advise that you instead follow awake times do some nap training and then you can fall into a clock based um, schedule okay i hope that helps and i will do a post on that it's a great idea like set nap times in bedtime yeah exactly Jen, I need help transitioning my 14 week old out of the swaddle. I can get her to nap in the swaddle, awake but drowsy, and sleep at night for about six hours, but arms out. She will not go to sleep. Help. Yes, yeah, so I, if you're trying to just use like her regular swaddle and do arms out, then I would just say go ahead like and ditch the swaddle. If she is showing signs that she's trying to roll over, then it's definitely time to transition out of the swaddle. Sorry if you guys hear some banging renovating um and instead you can either try out i don't love throwing products at people i honestly don't but in these early months i believe we have to use like what's known to work so if it's within your budget i would highly recommend either the merlin magic sleep suit which is a temporary fix it's like a weighted ski scoot suit that your baby sleeps in my baby still sleeps in one he's slept in one now for three months and i know he's growing out of it really soon as soon as she tries to roll but for me for three months it it was, it fit in our budget and it was a no brainer because he slips so well. So the Merlin Magic Sleep Suit or the Zippity Zip, you can use long term. So that might make more sense with your budget. So instead you want to go to a transitional uh, sleep suit. The Merlin, you can only wear for a short period until they roll. Um, if your little one's already showing signs of rolling, don't use the Merlin. Go with the Zippity Zip because it's safe to wear long term. I would just go ahead and transition out of it. Um, I don't love cold turkey approaches in general, but for transitioning out of the swaddle, I'm a pr cold turkey girl because I don't like baby having one arm out. I don't even love baby having both arms out and being swaddled down below. I just feel like we should give our babies full range of movement once they've shown us that they can roll. We want to make sure that they can get themselves into whatever sleep position that they feel comfortable with and we don't want to inhibit them in any way. Um, otherwise, if your little one's not showing signs that they're trying to roll, you can either let her hang out in the swaddle a little bit longer, or you could let get him roll in and hope that she doesn't roll for like another two months to make it worth it. Um, okay, I hope that helps, Jen. <laughs> Tracy, go. I'm so tired of it working. I wish it was Friday. Ah, well, yeah, that I can totally understand. Um, where are you based? I'm actually in Greece. I live in Europe, but I'm not sure if everybody knows that. Um, I've lived here for several years. I met my husband here on vacation and we live here. <gasps> Salmawa, I finally solved the 4.30 a.m. waking up. Yay! I wish I could do emojis, but I can't. Can, wait, can I? What is this? No, I think that's like, no, that's like filters. I would love to be a puppy face for the rest of this call, but, um, that's awesome. Can you tell us what, what do you think? was the trick was it one thing or what did you change like please share it with tired parents who are like on their sixth coffee and it's only noon please share your secret sauce what do you think did the trick nana nicole what do we do if our little if our littles wake up an hour and a half before the designated wait time i'm on step three of 21 days to peace and quiet we haven't done official sleep training yet okay so if my program has seven steps so nana nicole is on the third step. And so it's not until the last step that we teach our babies to fall asleep on their own and really do the official sleep training. The, 
the first six lessons we're building a healthy sleep foundation because if we take a few days to really get some consistency in your little one's sleep schedule and sleep routine, it makes that final bit of sleep training where you're putting your baby in the crib awake and expecting them to fall asleep on their own, it makes it go so much easier. So right now you're still helping your little one fall asleep, Nana Nicole. So if they wake up, let's say they normally wake up at 7 a.m. and if they wake up at 5.30 a.m., then what you would do is just Cross your fingers and go to your little one and try to get them back to sleep in whatever way you have been doing. So if you were nursing them to sleep, nurse them. If you were holding them, holding, hold them. If you're patting them or singing, I would do that and just really, really hope that they got back to sleep. You want to keep the room blacked out. You want to keep the white noise going. You don't want to turn on any lights. You don't want to have a lot of stimulation. I would just sneak in there and like try to feed my baby or try to like cuddle my baby and see if they'll fall back asleep till an hour closer to seven. It's okay to keep helping your baby fall asleep at this point of the program. If they don't fall back asleep, which is so terrible, I've been there, I've been trapped in the 5 a.m. wakings when my daughter was a baby. If they won't go back to sleep, then you've tried, there's nothing you can do. You'll probably wanna start your day by like six or 6.30, if, especially if they're upset. And then just go about your the program as is indicated inside the program. You wanna follow awake times, help you all not stay where you're rested help your little one stay well rested. So if they normally wake at seven and let's say the first nap was supposed to be at like 9.30, you're gonna have to move that first nap earlier because they've been up for an hour and a half earlier, right? So you have to move the first nap earlier, you might have to move the second nap earlier, you may have to put in a third cat nap if you do or don't do that. You're gonna have to make do during the day, try to get to your normal ideal bedtime and then start over. And the best thing you can do is just keep moving through the steps of the program because once your little one is sleeping independently, then we can expect them to resettle themselves during the night, including the 5 a.m. hour, okay? All right, good luck, and let us know how it goes. J3W31S, do babies have to be able to sleep independently to sleep through the night? Great question. No, if you have a little one who you help, like you nurse your baby to sleep at bedtime and they sleep through the night, it does happen for some babies at certain ages, but not all, so I can't even say like, don't worry by, 18 months little ones sleep through the night because I don't see that to be the truth. So no, there are some unicorns who are helped to sleep at bedtime and sleep through the night. If that's your little one, you know, more that's amazing. You've you've hit the lottery in regards to baby sleep. But if your little one is five to six months or older, continues to wake at night, especially if they're an older baby or a toddler and you're still having them to sleep, then chances are that, yes, they're going to have to be taught how to settle themselves to sleep so that they can resettle themselves in the night when they wake. I was explaining it again to my husband because we were starting sleep training with our newly turned six month old. And he's like, you know, walk me through it again. Cause he's not obsessed like with baby sleep in any way, like I am. He's like, remind me again, like why, what are we doing and why do we have to do it? And I was like, well, if we, if I was holding the baby and I nursed him to sleep on the sofa and then he woke up four hours later in his crib in a different room, different sleep environment, I wasn't there, he wasn't on the boob, he would be startled. He'd be like, where am I? Where's mom? Where's the boob? So we have to instead, the conditions that we have at bedtime have to also be the same for every night waking. And that includes having your little one settle themselves to sleep. Um, so I hope that answers your question. If you're struggling, then that having your little one sleep independently is the answer and it does work, but I guess it's not required of all kids. So if your little one's sleeping great, you don't really have to do anything. I just got an email from a mom who's like, I got it. I have a 10 month old and I feed him twice at night and he goes right back to sleep. Like, should I change anything? And I wrote her back and said, only if you're struggling or your baby is struggling, if you guys are happy, you don't have to change anything. Courtney, thank you. Both my kids are not trained and night train. Then you can move to a clock-based schedule. Just go with the times that normally happen for your naps and then you can totally follow that every day. Ah, uh, Jen rolling and I got the zip. Thanks, you're welcome. Good luck. Let me know how you, how you like the zippity zip. By and large, most parents are like, I love it, I love it, I love it. But not everybody, especially if babies are like thumb suckers because the zippity zip has the hands covered. So let me know what you think of it. Miria, when do you suggest switching from three to two naps? I have a guide on this with all the details. So if you go to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, if you just do a search for three to two naps, um, you'll find that guide. Babies are typically ready to drop the third nap when they're between six to nine months old and they're sleeping great at night. So even if they're not sleeping independently, they're sleeping like solidly like 11 to 12 hours at night. And also um, once they're napping pretty well for those first two naps a day. 
If the first two naps of the day are like 30 minutes and 30 minutes, then baby's gonna need that third nap to make it to bedtime. But if the first two naps like equal a total of two, two and a half hours, maybe even three, then they don't need the third nap. So that's kind of the criteria for dropping the third nap. Let's say you have a 10 or 11 month old who still takes three naps because, um, sorry, they're not sleep trained, like they're not sleeping great at night, they take really, really short naps, then your baby's like older than the criteria. So it's age-based, but it's also that they're getting solid sleep at night and those first two naps of the day are a total of at least two hours, ideally a little bit more. Um, then little ones will really just start showing you the signs. There's not many parents that are like, I wanna drop that third nap. Most of the time it's baby fighting the third nap consistently or suddenly out of the blue, they were napping well with three naps a day, but now they're taking really short naps three times a day. That can also be a sign already. So check out my guide because it has all the details. Sorry about the drilling. Nana Nicole, love to dream arms up was amazing. Okay, that's so, so good to know. I try to love to dream on my little guy. He wasn't crazy about it, but every baby's different. We loved the um, swaddle me when he was getting swaddled. It's like so recent and I can't remember. Swaddle me. It was, yeah, he loved it. Miracle blanket, I have to be honest. It was, it was so confusing. It's like huge, yeah, no, no. But I love the swaddle me. So I'm happy to hear you like the love to dream arms up. Thanks for the advice. We'll rock the zip tonight. I love the lingo. Brittany, I try to put my son down awake in his crib and he will just scream his head off to like pick him up. What do I do? Well, Brittany, if you're just trying this like because you know that it's like the thing to do, then I would encourage you to first have a look at my age-based sleep guide for your little one's specific age and make sure you're doing the fundamental steps first because when you do the fundamental steps first to keep your baby well rested, to get him under like a bit of a predictable routine, it really helps the sleep training part where you're putting your baby in the crib and asking him to fall asleep on their own. It makes it go so much easier. I don't know how old your little one is, but you can just go to babysleepmidsimple.com. In the top menu, you see baby ages and toddler ages. Just click there, find your baby's appropriate guide, and make sure you're doing everything. If there are some steps that you're not doing, then start them today and do them for at least like four or five days consistently. And then you can try to start sleep training again. Um, there's lots more I could say, but have a look at the guide. <laughs> Let me know if you have any follow-up questions. I'm going to try to get to as many questions as I can today. <sighs> Sisoy, what would we do if our little one only plays in her crib during nap? We usually leave her for one and a half hours. Any tips? Again, this depends on your little one's age, but if this is her normal nap time, she's always napped well at this time, and suddenly she's not, there's no harm with having quiet time. I mean, if you have a baby that plays in the crib for an hour and a half, you count your lucky stars because that's not really that common. I've never had a baby that played on the crib for that long, and I know many parents I work with don't but if that's your little one that's cool but what I would be wondering is like how old they are are they ready for a nap transition are they ready to drop a nap I would be looking at the specifics so you can go to my website as well and find your baby's um corresponding sleep guide for their age and then you can see like let's say your little one for instance is taking two naps a day but they're about 14 months old 15 16 months old maybe they're ready to drop to one nap a day or maybe your little one takes three naps a day and they're ready to drop to two. Maybe nap time needs to be adjusted a little bit. So find the corresponding age guide so you can get some ideas about why this might be happening. But just know if they're just going through a funky period, like if they're 11 months old and they're going through the 11 month nap regression, a nap specific regression that happens at 11 months that not a lot of people know about. If that's the case and they're already on two naps a day, then don't drop one, just keep doing your quiet time. It will pass and your little one will go back to napping well. Wasi C, I have attempted sleep training the chair method, but have caved twice. My 13 month old just stood up in the cot and screamed and made herself sick. How do I get myself back on track? I know it's look, we talked about this recently and I have a client in my program whose little one, every time she tried sleep training, she would get so upset that she would vomit because little ones, they're different with their sensitivities, you know, so we were working through that and she's actually doing okay with a really, really, really slow chair method. So if your little one gets so upset that they vomit, then you, I do recommend that you use a slow and gradual method. Um, and then little tweaks, like if you're still feeding in your bedtime routine, like a breastfeed or a bottle feed, then I encourage you to move it a lot earlier. If we give our little ones a full bottle of milk or a full breastfeed, and then they get upset and cry, and if they have like a sensitive gag reflex, they will vomit. So instead try to feed them maybe before bath time, because that can help as well. And then just slow down your chair method. Slow it right down. You may spend a week 
at the bedside sitting in a chair giving reassurance. You may give her several pickups and cuddles the first few days. You may hold her hand through the crib bars. You may sing to her. Whatever it takes, whatever you notice works really well, then just stay there. And, and normally in a chair method, I recommend you move like every two days, you, you lessen your support. But in this case, I would go even slower and I'd say maybe even a week at each position. Slow it right down. So you can write down the steps that you're doing and then say, I'm gonna do these. And in a week's time, this is how I'm gonna lessen my support. Um, I mean, more hands-on methods for a toddler really end up being too stimulating or distracting. So I do think chair method is the way to go, but just slow it right down. Tips on not to cave when you're sleep training. This is really important. I think during the day, especially if you're having like a rough day and you're just hitting the wall, I would just sit down for like two minutes with a pen and a paper, not a phone with a pen and a paper, because it's just more real to get things out of your head, and just write down why you and your little one need to sleep better. How are you specifically struggling? Like physically, um, emotionally, relationships, you as a mom, how are you specifically struggling? Write it down and say, I deserve a good night's sleep because, and also with your little one, you know, maybe she's grumpy during the day, maybe her tantrums are, out of control. Maybe you see that she's tired and that she deserves to sleep well too. So write that down. So write down all the reasons why you need this to happen. Okay. And not just all the bad stuff, but that when we're sleeping better, then we can enjoy this. We can do these things together. I will be happier mom, more patient mom. I won't yell, you know, most of the time I won't be an angry, bitter mom. These are my personal reasons, you know, um, for me personally, why I always need good sleep. I'm a happier, better person in general. So write these things down and then take a few days off if you want. And then when you know you need to do it, then just sit down, read your list and say, okay, this is it. Like this is my motivation. Why it will work. I will try my hardest to not cave because I know in a week's time we'll be sleeping so much better and just kind of give yourself a pep talk. Um, maybe you could recruit your partner or a best friend and say, Hey, here's the deal. I need to sleep train. I need you to keep me accountable. Right now, I'm telling you it's going to happen. So every day, can you check in with me? Can you remind me that I said that this was important and why? Having like an accountability partner, that can really, really, really help as well. All right. Good luck to you. Nana, if they don't go back to sleep, do we start the day at the designated time? Yes. I mean, if you can make it like in my example, all the way to seven, but if not, you can start the day earlier. Like if your little one's upset and crying that you don't have to like hang out in a dark bedroom for an hour and a half. Trey Cinco, update. Our little one played around in the crib rails for a few nights, but back at sleeping through the night. Thank you for all your tips. Her naps are also improving. So glad we follow your tips and suggestions. Thank you. That's great news. So, so see, see, your little one, like we talked about earlier in the week, they'll go through phases where they're just awake in the crib, whether they're playing or hanging out or standing or sitting. And it's cute for a while, but it, it can be worrying because you can be like, they're losing sleep. And what did Jilly's tips say that they have to sleep this much? And, and then what am I going to do with naps the next day? Like, I totally understand that, but there's nothing you can do. It's a temporary phase. They're exploring the crib. They're trying out their new motor skills of standing up and looking around and talking, talking, talking. The best thing you can do is just leave them be. Let them get it out of their system. Go back to sleep. It doesn't last forever. If you go in and try to help them, either you're going to fully wake them up and they're going to want to party or you're going to start a dependence on you to help them fall back asleep, which could continue for a long time. Well done, Tracinko. Danielle, my son is eight months today. Happy eight months. What is your favorite parents present sleeping training method and how long does it typically take? So for an eight month old, you actually have a few that you could choose from. So it would depend on your little one's um, temperament. If you look here on my Instagram page a few weeks back, you'll see one of the posts is sleep training methods explained. So it explains a few of the popular ones that I recommend and how to choose it based on your baby's age and personality or temperament. So go back and check that post, anybody that's curious. So for an eight month old, you really have a variety. You could do more hands on or you could do hands off. You want a parent's present. So the two that I would recommend, unless your little one was highly, highly sensitive, um, you want to go with like my minimal tears method. But for an eight month old, I would do something similar to the chair method, what we just talked about, or something similar to like a pick up put down method. So it depends on your little one's personality. If your little one is kind of like um, laid back, easygoing, or kind of, you know, 
He's a typical baby. He doesn't really throw you for a loop too often. They hit regressions like every other baby. Teething bothers them like every other baby. But they don't leave you guessing in the night. Like, what in the world does she want? She just yells at me all day long. If they're kind of predictable, you kind of get them or they're easy, then I encourage you to do a parent present but a hands-off method like the chair method. If your little one is really energetic, really spirited, life of the party, like anything in their environment that you can see that just their battery gets like charged and they just want to interact and go, 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 go. Like they're the boss, strong will, determined. Also a hands-off method is best, surprisingly, because what we find is when parents try to be too hands-on, it can frustrate these little ones too much. So also a chair method in that instance. However, if your little one's quite sensitive, really slow to adapt to change, new people, new environments, um, quite attached to you, really, really, really affectionate, then I would do a more hands-on method like the pick up, put down. And so in both of these methods, you stay in your little one's bedroom while you teach them to sleep better. So I hope that helps. And you can also go back to the Instagram post from a few weeks ago to get more tips. Jasmine, hello. My 14 month old fights his naps in the crib and I have to let him nap on our bed. He sleeps through the night in his crib just fine. I breastfeed him for his naps, but not for bedtime. Well, if you wanna get him napping in his crib, which I recommend because he's gonna nap for at least another two years, maybe even longer, then just do some nap training. At 14 months, he can understand. So I would just sit him down and say like for earlier in the morning and say, today for your nap time, we're gonna go in your room, you know, and whatever he does at night. So I'm gonna put on your sleep sack, we're gonna read a book, you're gonna cuddle your teddy, whatever happens in like the bedtime routine, just a shorter version. So we're gonna do that and you're gonna sleep in your, your big boy bed, his crib. Um, and then I would do a bit of nap training to, might take a few days to get him used to going to his crib awake and falling asleep there. Our little ones are smart and they can learn to nap one way and sleep at night a different way. They can learn to fall asleep with different caregivers like in different ways, they're really clever. So you know he can fall asleep in his crib and sleep there really well at night. So he could totally during, do it during the day. You just have to t let him know that's what you expect of him. Say, okay, here's what's happening from now on. Mommy's here, mommy loves you, but you're gonna sleep in your big boy bed. And it may take a few days, but if you take your bed off the menu and you don't offer it anymore, he will adapt within a few days. He may skip his nap for the first day or two, so be prepared to have a very early bedtime, super early, like maybe even six o'clock, and then try again the next day. After a few days when he's like, mommy means business, then he'll adapt and start napping in his crib. Rachie Turner, my three month old is waking every two and a half to three hours overnight. Previously was going four hours. I think she might not be feeding properly. She's breastfed as she keeps falling asleep. Would bottle feeding change this? Well, I mean, trust your intuition because you're with your little one and you know your little one best. But if your little one is just always falling asleep for a night feed, I wouldn't necessarily assume that they're, that they're not feeding properly, I would assume they're now waking up and they're needing to feed to fall back asleep. So it's more of like a sleep prop. And around three to four months, uh, little ones go through a big development. I'm sorry if you guys can hear that drill. It's like they just showed up. <laughs> Been here all day, but they just showed up now to do the renovations. Um, so our little ones go through a big developmental phase between three to four months and sleep patterns change. And what often happens with this is they can stir more often at night. And if your little one is used to being fed back to sleep during the night, then they'll start waking up more during the night. Um, so you could certainly try to bottle feed. You could try to keep your little one awake during the bottle feed, or you could just put more focus on keeping your little one awake during their night feeds so that they take a bigger feed. Um, and the way that you can do this is, don't turn on the lights or anything for a night feed, but just kind of talk to your little one while they're feeding at night, you can stroke her leg. And rather than like singing to her, lulling her back to sleep, you could just talk to her like, oh, talk about anything. You know, like, oh, it's three in the morning and you're gonna have your feed and I'm keeping you awake, doesn't matter what you say. But just talk to her a little bit, stroke her leg a little bit so she doesn't totally fall back asleep. Then when you feel like her feeding has really slowed down, like she was, you know, eating really well before, now it's slowed down and her eyes are closed, then I would take her off the breast, I put her up on the shoulder, get a good burp out of her and then get her back in the crib so you know she's taking a bigger feed. If that works, then you'll know that your intuition was right. If it doesn't or she keeps falling asleep at the breast no matter what you do, then probably she's waking because she's being fed back to sleep in the night. Um, yeah, so hopefully that gives you a few ideas to try out. 
Natasha, my baby learned to stand up in the crib, but he's afraid to get down. When I help him down, he gets up again. Jack in the box, even though he's tired. If you look at my post from two days ago, this is exactly what we talk about. My baby stands up in the crib and either can't get himself back down or won't get himself back down. So have a look at that post because it gives you specifics of what to do. If you're on Facebook, I would actually hop over to my Facebook page because I'm able to write a longer post than I am on Instagram. So it's got even more um, specifics for you on what to do and how to intervene. It just depends basically if your little one's upset or not. If they're not upset, the best thing you can do is leave them and give them time to practice getting themselves back down and also have them practice during the day. Okay, good luck. Check out my post from two days ago. Rita, my 14 month old used to sleep in his crib until eight months, then we moved and now we co-sleep. I wanted to sleep in his crib and in his room. Which one should I tackle first, naps or bedtime? Bedtime, 100%. When teaching little ones to sleep well, we always begin at bedtime and we always focus on nights first. Bedtime specifically is the time of the day where your little one is the most tired and therefore most likely to comply with changes to their sleep routine and sleep habit. So we always use that to our advantage and the same goes for nights. Your baby's drive to sleep, which is like their tiredness level, is a lot during the night. Their tiredness level during the day comes and goes. So we don't want them fighting really hard during the day. We want to fix nights and then use that momentum to then fix uh, days. So that's what I would do. Um, at 14 months, your little one can totally learn to sleep in their crib, in their bedroom, and sleep all night long and fall asleep on their own. Um, if you haven't yet, you can start off with my free Exhausted Mom Survival Kit. You can click the link in my bio here and sign up for that. You can also check out my one-year-old sleep guide on my website. Just do a search on my website for one-year-old. And you can, between those two guides, you'll get very, very specific tips of how to start and what to do. Um, yeah. And if you ever want to join us in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet, I can walk you through it all. But we can definitely make all that happen. A lot of the parents, I'd say more than half the parents that join the program are co-sleeping, sharing a bed with their little ones. And so we work toward getting your little one sleeping in a crib either in their own bedroom or in your bedroom. It can definitely be done. Okay, good luck, Rita. Rita and how, I'm not sure which method to tackle. Have a look at those two guides um, and worry about which specific method. In a few days, we can chat about that. Gosika, we are co-sleeping at the moment. Can you talk about safe co-sleeping? Um, it's a little bit tricky for me. I'll be completely honest with you guys because I received parents choice to co-sleep. I know a lot of parents do it out of necessity and I know a lot of parents do it because they want to do it. But at the same time, I really have to prioritize safety um, because safety is my biggest concern. I want everyone's little ones to be safe while sleeping. So to be honest, Kosika, like it's not more often that I say this, but I'm really, I, I, I'm not I don't want to give any recommendations for co-sleeping. You can certainly find lots of references online and people that are comfortable doing it, but I feel like from my position, um, helping parents, I can only really recommend uh, crib sleeping or bassinet sleeping if your little one's young and not yet rolling over because it's proven to be the safest. So I'm not judging anybody, I'm not saying you're doing the wrong thing, but there are plenty of resources online that will give you recommendations for safe code sleeping. But I, I don't feel comfortable doing it because I would hate for something to happen. So I'm sorry. CMT, what, are the, what signs are there to know when to drop a nap? Nine and a half month old. So you're probably thinking about dropping the third nap of the day. If you go to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, if you do a search for three to two naps, you'll find my guide on if my baby's ready to drop the third nap and how I can do it. So the signs of dropping the third nap I mentioned earlier are your baby has to sleep really well at night. So it sleeps 11 to 12 hours, either through the night or like really solidly, maybe one night feed, but you're not struggling with nights. You're like, we're doing amazingly or we're doing really, really good. Um, also, the first two naps of the day have to equal about two hours total daytime sleep or more. If your little one's taking a 30 minute morning nap, 30 minute afternoon nap, they're gonna need the third nap. But if they're taking like an hour and a half and an hour or you know two hours and one hour um, then you can drop the third nap so those are the criteria but my guide walks you through all the details specifically so make sure to check that out 
Yeah, and also, do you have suggestions for sleep training twins? Same method, sleep training at the same time. We've had several twin families in our program, 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. And by and large, the parents have chosen to do the same method for their twins, usually at the same time. And many of them do it while room sharing. Their twins are already sharing a bedroom. And if the twins are pretty similar-ish in personality, then they usually do the same method. Mostly because it's just easier to keep up with. However, I have had some families, and one particular I'm remembering, where her twins had quite different personalities. Her boy was really, really sensitive, and her girl was more kind of like hands-off, kind of like easy, laid-back type. So she did a quick method with her daughter first, and in a separate bedroom, and then she did a slower, uh, minimal tears approach with her son. Um, and then at one point, they were sharing a room, um, and I think like six months passed, and then they hit like a regression. So then she got back in touch with me and then she managed to do two different methods at the same time in the same room. I was like, you're a rock star. But in general, I would say if your twins are quite similar, just go ahead and knock it out in one go um, and do the same method. And you can often do it in the same bedroom. Even if your twins wake each other up right now, really soon they won't. Sleep trained babies sleep deeper and also twins get really used to hearing each other. So if for you know space reasons, um, you need them to share a bedroom, then I think it's fine to do that. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Crystal, hi Jilly. Up until recently, my baby was taking five 45 minute naps. He dropped his fifth nap, but his fourth nap usually ends at 4.30 or 5, so he put his bedtime no later than 7 or 7.30. He is 17 weeks, right? Okay, so he's four months old, so awake times are like an hour and a half to two and a half hours. So if he finishes his nap at five, then yeah, bedtime, exactly, seven or 7.30. I have tried to move his nap times, but he just sleeps less time. Well, um, you don't have to change anything. I mean, seven or 7.30 is, if you've tried to change naps and change bedtime and it's not working, you know, 7.30 is not an insane bedtime for a four month old if he can manage to get 11 or 12 hours of night sleep, and some can. If he's instead trying to wake up for the day at 4 or 5 a.m. repeatedly, then yeah, we need to work on pushing bedtime later. I'm not sure, I, is that you, hold on. Yes, here she is. When sleep training, you say work on nights first. Does that mean I should help my baby fall asleep during the day? Yes. So Crystal, if you haven't already, check out, I have two guides on my website. One of them is why is my four month old not sleeping? And that talks about why four month olds have trouble sleeping specifically at this age, but it also gives you specific tips that will help a four month old sleep well. And yes, when we're, when we're first focusing on nighttime sleep, there are a few things that you should do during the day, like watch awake times, make sure your little one naps enough during the day, but we do not work on independent sleep for naps. Instead, you can help your baby take naps. You can wear them in the carrier, you could hold them, you could go for a stroll, have them like lying in a flat stroller for a supervised nap or they could nap in the crib, but it's okay to help them fall asleep. It's okay to feed them to sleep while we work on night sleep because we want them to stay well rested. If we try to nap train and night train at the same time, many babies fight naps when we first begin nap training, then you end up with an overtired, cranky mess at bedtime and it affects their night sleep. Grizzlaw, our awake times are pretty good. Naps are decent enough and the babies mostly sleep through the night. I feel like there's a butt coming. <laughs> But the baby wakes at 5.15 a.m. We aren't the best at getting up that early. No, I'm not either. How can we get to six? Well, here's the deal. Pretty good, decent, and mostly. I'm just gonna like be real with you for a second. If you, here's the thing, like once we sleep train and once we like go through nap training, some parents hit a point where it's like, no, baby's sleeping great independently, but we're struggling with early wakings. So I don't know, the fact that you said pretty good, decent, and mostly means there's still a little bit to work on. And when you work on this, then the early awakenings will improve. But if, for instance, awake times sometimes are stretched too long, that can actually exacerbate early wakings. Naps are decent enough, but if naps aren't, if some days naps are really crappy and short or really inconsistent and the awake times are changing, that can exacerbate early wakings as well. Babies mostly sleeping through the night. Maybe this means that sometimes you go in for a night waking and help your baby fall back asleep. Any sort of inconsistency or them depending on you definitely exacerbates early wakings. Cause it's like this. No, my baby goes to the crib at bedtime, falls asleep on around, I'm not in the room, it's great. 
Sometimes she wakes up around midnight and I give her a feed. Sometimes she falls asleep during that feed. Other times it doesn't happen. But any inconsistency means on those mornings when baby wakes at five, she's like, mm, I need that help. That help that you sometimes give me, I really need it. I can't resettle myself at this hour because I've already gotten nine or 10 hours of sleep. So I'm not that tired. I should sleep more, but I'm not that tired and I need your help. And then when we go to our little one, often they just say, oh, never mind. I'd rather party with you. So Grizz Law, what I would say is really try to tighten up everything. Independent sleeper at bedtime for any night wakings. Um, really take yourself away as a sleep prop. Um, tighten up the awake times, work on naps, and then the early wakings should go away. All right, good luck. Curdy Curly. Seven month old sleeps 10 hours at night, but takes two two hour naps in the day. That's nice. <laughs> I bet you can get a lot done. It works for us, but is it okay for her to sleep only 10 hours a night? If her moods are stable, she's happy, she's thriving, you're happy, go for it. You're welcome, Wessie. Yeah, Yanita, Judge Anita, can I start self-soothing on a three-month-old? You can try, but just know that if your little one rejects it after like several attempts, they may just be too young. Um, I have several guides on my website for three-month-olds, so check those out. You can go to babysleepmadesimple.com and in the top age menu, just find the one for three-month-olds, and you'll see I have three guides. So either your little one will kind of have the ability to self-soothe or not, but even if they don't, there are other aspects of their sleep routine and sleep schedule that you can work on that will improve their sleep. And the guides explain more. A girl named Fred, I like that name. Can you do your 21 day program without a sound machine? Yes, and sleeping in the same room? Yes and yes, but please, please, white noise, please, white noise, please. I don't, I haven't done like a social media post on white noise because I'm like, is that interesting enough? But you know what? I get asked about it so much that I should. So I'm gonna write this down in addition to the other great recommendation I got earlier. Do you want me to talk more about white noise? I find that parents either don't like the idea of white noise either because they think it's bad for their baby or harmful, or they think it's something they're just gonna have to wean off in the future, like the pacifier, why start now if we have to stop later, or they're gonna room share and they hate it themselves. My husband is like a very sensitive sleeper. He has many specificities for how his sleep space should be. I'm the opposite. I'm like, just a pillow, please, and I'll like pass out. He can't handle any noise in the bedroom ever. So white noise for him uh, doesn't work. And there's many other couples that I've worked with that room share, and they say the same thing. But what I would say is white noise has been proven over and over and over to help people sleep deeper and longer. Now, if you're one of those people that you can't handle white noise, I respect that. But can you wear earplugs and maybe your partner doesn't or vice versa? So that baby still gets the white noise because if you room share, I'll just give it to you straight. Like if you room share with your baby and you're trying to sleep train without white noise, I would put my bet on the fact that you won't 100% succeed. Meaning your little one's still gonna wake up during the night because they're gonna hear you. Like they're just gonna know you're there and the white noise can't is not there to lull them back to sleep. Or they'll wake up early in the morning. So if there's any chance that you could be swayed to use white noise, then please, 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 please use it. Um, but you don't have to, you don't have to. Um, and your little one can definitely sleep in the same room with you. Many parents continue room sharing when they do 21 days to and quiet. We would love to have you join us. Let me know if you have any more questions. You can click the link in my bio. You can see 21 days to peace and quiet if anyone wants more information on the program. Liana, hey, Jilly, how quickly do we do less hands-on in the chair method? Every two days or so? If you're doing a traditional chair method, yes, you should like wean off of your support or like move toward the door about every two days. But as I mentioned with an earlier question, if you have a little one who is really sensitive or just does not handle changes to their sleep routine, vomits for instance, then slow it right down. But in general, two days, because you want to just keep moving forward. Hey, Lauren. Love you too. Hey, English Lucy. Beth M. Jones. Our little one is almost six months old. Congratulations. And always sleeps well at night. Amazing. We'll sleep a 10 hour stretch, but he's waking at 5 a.m. every day out of nowhere. Help. We don't like 5 a.m. I don't like 5 a.m. I've worked with like two parents that were like, I'm cool with 5 a.m. waking. And I'm like, why can't I be you? But they go to bed at like eight or something, nine. I don't know. I don't, we don't go to bed that early. 
I probably should. Um, that's amazing, Beth. So is your little one's bedtime seven? So it's evening seven to five? What I would say is I have a guide for babies waking early. If you go to babysleepmadesimple.com and if you just do a search for baby waking early in the morning, um, you'll find it right there and it lays out all, I think it's like nine criteria to get your baby sleeping later in the morning. So definitely check that out and start doing all the tips every single day. And the night waking, that's right, the early waking should improve. I mean, it could also be waking because they're hungry because it's been 10 hours and they're only six months old. But then by the time you feed them, they're like, hey, this is a good time to start the day. Um, so I think the guide talks about that, but make sure you're feeding your little one often every two to three hours all day long. So you can really try to get all of their nutrition um, intake in the day. But my baby waking early guide will have more details for you. Hey, English Lucy. My 12 month old is in a grid next to us, but we think she's aware we are there and plays up more. Should we move her into her own room? If you like at some point know you want your little one in their own room and you're okay with the idea, then I would. Because especially for older babies and toddlers, when they know that we're there, it's just hard for them. They love you so much. They wanna hang out. Why are you doing this boring thing of lying down in your bed and like not making any noise? That's so boring. Why don't you play with me? So yeah, I would, especially at 12 months, I would move them into their own bedroom if you're okay with that idea. It often helps many little ones sleep through the night. When you're, of course, doing all the sleep training steps, it can help them move, sleep through the night. Lots of questions about the three to two nap transition. Maybe I'll do a post on that next week. Three to two naps. Uh, Viana, when does baby drop? Oh, sorry, drop the second nap. Oh, that's two to one. Um, when does baby drop the second nap? So usually it's between, it's usually not earlier than 14 months. Um, it's often around 15 months. So 14 to 16, most likely, and up to 18 months. I have a whole guide on this. If you go to my website and if you just do a search for um, how to transition to one nap, I think it's called. And it walks you through all the criteria of is your little one ready? If your little one is 12 months or younger, and if they've been fighting naps recently, then I would advise you to not drop the second nap. It's just a normal phase that our little ones go to at 11 to 12 months where there can be like a nap regression and also at the age of 12 months, the little ones often just fight sleep in general, but they need two naps a day. They need those short awake times. They need two breaks during the day. And if we transition to one nap, it may work for a few days, but then it catches up with them. So ideally your little one's about 14 months or older. Um, and when you see they're consistently fighting one of the naps or taking short naps out of the blue. But check out my guide on transitioning from two to one naps and it spells everything out for you. Courtney, my 11 month old has had weird naps today. 9.30 to 10.30, 1.30 when it's usually two to 3.30. What time would you put them to bed? Um, they woke up at 2.45. They are 11 months old, so they could handle up to four hours of wait time, probably 6.30. Asleep at 6.30, asleep at 6.30. Kara, I only breastfeed twice through the night. The other wakings we do Ferber extinction. Did I miss a previous question, Kara? I'm sorry if I did. I'm sorry, I'll try to get, oh, maybe it's later. Crisp, hi Jilly, since I night weaned my three, one years. She wakes up twice and wants to turn on the lights. <laughs> we co-sleep. I only breastfeed her for her nap. She has a total of 11 hours. Is that enough? How do I improve her sleep? How old is she though? Is she, is she one? Um, it sounds like she's at least a toddler. So yeah, I mean, the thing about toddlers and sharing a bed is that can happen, like I mentioned earlier. They wake up during the night for whatever reason, and they want to hang out. They want to play with you. You're there. There's no boundaries. Let's do it. So if you're in any way inclined, I would move your little one to a, to a crib because you could get like one or two more years in the crib um, or at least to her own bed and maybe even her own room and do some sleep training. Um, Depending on your little one's age, you can go to my website and you can find the age-appropriate sleep guide that gives specific tips, because sorry, I don't know how old your little one is. Um, but it definitely sounds like they need to learn to sleep independently. So you've night weaned, which is great, but they're still waking at night, so they're still needing your help to fall back asleep. So I would definitely start sleep training. Yulia, at what 
age is it appropriate to transfer to the crib? We're six months, but she still eats during the night three or four times, so it's actually comfortable to co-sleep. But of course, I understand we're gonna have to do it. Honestly, the earlier the better. Because as we talked about, first of all, it, the safest place for your baby to sleep is in a crib. Um, a crib with a mattress, only a fitted sheet, all sides of the crib up, old, old cribs had sides that could come down. So all of the crib sides up. Your little one can sleep right next to you, but just in their own safe sleep space. Um, but earlier on Monday and Tuesday, Yulia, we did post on baby sitting up, rolling, standing. And if you wait and you're co-sleeping and then suddenly your little one's rolling, now you're going to be awake all night long because you're going to be worried about them. Are they rolling into an unsafe position or if they're starting to sit up? So it's better to get them used to sleeping in a crib before they hit these big physical milestones so that when they hit, it could still disrupt their sleep for a night or two, but they're in a safe space. Like you're not paranoid waking in the middle of the night because your baby's rolled off the bed. It happens, happens a lot. Um, instead, they're in the crib. You'll just use, lose a few nights sleep and then you get them back to sleeping well. So I would do it now, for sure. Viana, when do you stop using the bottle to put baby to sleep? Great question. Around five months old, babies can be taught to settle themselves to sleep. So if you've been helping them fall asleep, then I would start at five months old. I have a five month old sleep training uh, guide on my website that you can find. Boons, boons. I sleep train my five month old, but he's still waking up three times a night. How do I drop the night feed? Uh, so he's sleeping independently, but he's still getting three night feeds. Well, I have a guide on weaning night feedings. If you go to my website and just do a search for weaning night feedings, you'll find that. Um, basically, if they're already sleep trained, then you have to just kind of utilize your sleep training steps in addition to night weaning. So if your little one feeds three times a night, they're probably feeding every four hours, right? So what I would do is I would say, okay, tonight I'm not gonna feed until the five hour mark. So if they fed at seven o'clock, right? And then they went to sleep and then normally they'd feed at like 11 and then three and then seven, then I would say, okay, tonight we're not gonna be feed before midnight. And if my baby woke up before that designated feed time, then I would utilize the sleep training steps that, that I use to get them um, sleep trained. I would utilize those to get my baby to fall back asleep on their own and then later when they wake anytime after midnight, then you can feed them. Let's say they woke at one. So they actually went from seven to one. You fed them at one, they fell back asleep on their own. Then I would say, okay, no, I'm not gonna feed before 6 a.m. So you just kind of start stretching the time between feeds and you utilize your sleep training tips to teach baby to fall back asleep on their own. This is why I like to do sleep training and night weaning together because otherwise if they're not sleep trained and they wake and you're like, no, it's too early to feed, you might have to rock them for twice the amount of time that you that it took you normally, or you might start walking them around the room or pulling them into your bed. So that's why I like to do sleep training with night meeting. Okay, hope that helps. Michi Rivera, my daughter is 22 months, takes an hour nap, no longer than that. She wakes up at least two times at night. I just started your survival kit. Any extra suggestions? Yeah, why don't you check out my, you're kind of on the cusp. You can check out my, I would check out my one-year-old sleep guide. Um, it's got lots and lots of tips. My two-year-old sleep guide has, it's more about sleep problems. So if you just go to my website, it's called how to get your one-year-old sleeping amazingly. I think that's what it's called. So check that out. So those age specific tips plus the exhausted mom survival kit tips will give you, that's a mouthful, will give you lots of homework <laughs> to work on. Um, at 22 months, your little one can fall asleep on her own, sleep 11 to 12 hours straight at night, totally on her own, doesn't need to feed. And I bet once that happens and you do a little bit of nap training, you'll get her taking a two hour nap every day. So 11 to 12 hours at night and a two hour nap. Um, it can totally happen. You just gotta let her know what's coming. She's a toddler, she hates to be surprised. Let her know what's coming, let her know your expectations, but that you're always there loving her and supporting her. Um, so yeah, work through this survival kit and my one year old sleep guide. That'll give you lots to work on, but it will help improve your little one's sleep. Crystal. Oh, she's a 17 week old. Who's over 19 pounds. Good Lord. My gosh, your baby's big. My guy weighs about 20, 21 and he's six months and he's fat. We co-sleep and my baby gets unlimited breast milk all night long, waking after 4 a.m. every hour to eat. Yeah. So it's time. It's time, Crystal. You gotta, you gotta work on it now and you will see tremendous improvements from waking up all the time. Should I attempt to wean him a little before sleep training or just start both when we decide you're like, I don't love um, starting sleep training before uh, 20 weeks, you're 17 weeks. So what I recommend you do is follow the tips from my four month old sleep guide. It starts to build a healthy and consistent 
a sleep foundation for your little one. Um, I would start to do that now, and then when he's a little bit closer to 20 weeks, then I would start official sleep training. He'll be totally ready for it then. Um, what you could do now in the meantime is you could set up a crib or a travel crib like right next to your side of the bed. And what I would do, this is what we do in my really, really gentle sleep training program, sleep training method in my program, is first we just get baby used to sleeping in the crib. Um, what, so what you can do is you can still help him fall asleep. You can still feed him to sleep. And then once he's in a deep sleep, you can ninja him into the crib and just get his body used to sleeping there. On the first night, he may only sleep in the crib two hours. That's completely fine. That's a win. Better than the previous night. On the next night, he may sleep in the crib four hours. But over time, with you putting him into the crib and after every you know night feed, putting him in the crib, gets him used to it. So that, in a few weeks, when you're ready to sleep train, he's spending the majority of the night in the crib, maybe not all, and then you'll probably feel more comfortable starting sleep training. Also, some little ones, when they get put in the crib, start sleeping a bit longer stretches because they're not pressed up right up against you in your breast. And then in the night go, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Let me feed a little bit more. Puts a little bit of distance between the two of you and can often help them sleep. Not tremendously better, but a bit better. You know, instead of waking every hour, waking every two or three hours. So I would do that crystal. And then certainly by 20 weeks, you can start official sleep training, maybe a little bit earlier. We can talk about it. I have a mom in my program now who joined at four months old because she was just so spent. She's like, I have to start now. So she started in her, actually, her little one did great. Um, but definitely check out my four-month-old sleep guide. Start doing those tips, and then you can DM me and let me know what's going on. And maybe if, if you want help, we, you could join the program a little bit earlier. But just know that the earlier the better. It sets you up to sleep amazingly long-term, and you can make tremendous improvements in just a few weeks, I promise. Girl named Fred, yes to a post on white noise, please. Okay, awesome, it's happening. Natasha, husband hates white noise. He thinks baby hates it too. He said, if my head hurts, his head must hurt too. So he's always switching it to the rain sound. Ah, okay, here's the deal. I'm like a by the book girl and I'm like, white noise is a continuous noise, it's static. So it's, it's, the, and it's like the setting that gets studied the most, so we know that it works. However, there was a time when my baby did sleep with my daughter, slept with a bit of rain, and that's just because we messed up the setting and it took me like several days and I was like, that's not white noise, that's rain. I was like a new mom, forgive me. Rain, forgivable. But if you have something like waves where the noise changes, if you have something like lullabies, it may help your little one fall asleep and they may sleep okay at night, but usually in the early morning hours, it's like as we've gotten a bit of sleep, eight or nine hours of sleep for our babies who should be sleeping like 11 or 12, then after that, the sleep becomes lighter. And so if there's anything happening in their environment, like a wave sound or a lullaby, it could bring them out of their sleep and wake them up. So rain, I think is okay. White noise is great. Pink noise is great. I recently heard about brown noise. I'm not sure I haven't listened to it, but it's probably fine. Um, but anything like lullabies or music, I would say no. But if you want to switch to rain, that's fine. Difference in white noise types, pink noise. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Well, you're giving me great ideas. Pink noise, we'll talk about brown, because I heard about that. We'll talk about rain, and we'll talk about lullabies. Yeah. Pink noise, there was a phase where people were like, pink noise is better than white noise, because it's a different frequency, but they're both fine, is the answer. Mishi Rivera, my daughter is... I think we talked, didn't we talk? Like, I remember your name. She's 22 months, she sleeps in a crib, she goes to sleep at nine, she wakes up two times and destroys your, yes, 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 we talked, okay, sorry. Ah, uh, Crisp, your little one's three years old. Okay, well then, time for a, a toddler bed, for sure. Uh, dad, ooh, I, I like sensed it coming. There's the two minute warning. Oh, how am I doing? Oh, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna finish. Uh, Dadu nap. My baby is six months and two weeks. I feel like he needs two naps now because it's getting hard to put him down for the last nap. How can I change it to two naps? Go to babysleepmadesimple.com, do a search for three to two nap transition. I've got a detailed guide that walks you through it. Smarchililo, when is it safe to provide a pillow and a blanket in the crib? 18 months earliest, but ideally closer to two years. Blanket, specifically, like over two years old, because they're gonna kick it off all night long. Trust me, I've been there, it's annoying. Niggy, my baby's four months, doesn't feed other than when sleepy. At bedtime, she's too tired and fussy to feed, takes two hours to calm her, put her to sleep. We started to... 
click the link in my bio and start my exhausted mom's survival kit sign up for it and check your email i'm going to email you check your promotions in your spam folders it's going to walk you through all this to set your bedtime up to go a lot more peacefully a lot better it's going to work it all out for you okay exhausted mom's survival kit liana last question six and a half months old uses the pacifier to fall asleep and then she wakes up before breastfeed i put it back in her mouth and place my hand on her chest and she's about to just stop this It's a good strategy to use to uh, reduce her night feeds. And then once you've reduced her night feeds down to like one night feed or weaned off all night feeds, then I would wean off the pacifier. Uh, but it's a great strategy to use to wean. Ah, oh, no, another question. African queen. I started sleep training my 10 month old, but he would wake up around 11 and refuse to sleep for one and a half hours. I put him down around eight. Please check out my sleep training guide for 10 month old babies on my website. Um, do a search for 10 month old. And I think we talked the other day, so you might've already looked at that, but make sure you're following the nap specific tips. Cause when babies wake up, in the middle of the night, make sure that, that you're following their nap tips. I'll have something else to say. Also, just stick to the steps of your sleep training program because when you do that, I promise these night wakings will stop. Okay, whew, I have six. Ah, June, I'm sorry. I've got six seconds left and Instagram's gonna cut me off. Check out my newborn sleep guide on my website, okay? I'll, <laughs> sorry, it's gonna cut me off. Bye, guys. Lots of love.